also made to political parties which are not substantially represented. Contributions to such political parties are made purely with the intent of expressing support. It is true that contributions made as quid pro quo transactions are not an expression of political support. However, to not grant the umbrella of privacy to political contributions only because a portion of the contributions is made for other reasons would be impermissible. The constitution does not turn a blind eye merely because of the possibilities of misuse. Thus, the right of informational privacy extends to financial contributions to political parties, which is a facet of political affiliation. We have applied the double proportionality standard to balance the conflicting rights of the right to information and the right to informational privacy. The constitution does not establish a hierarchy between the right to information guaranteed under Article 19.1a and the right to informational privacy to political affiliation traceable to Articles 19.1a, 19.1b, 19.1c and Article 21. The Union of India submitted that Clause 7.4 of the Electoral Bond Scheme balances the right to information of the voter and the right to informational privacy. We are of the opinion that Clause 7.4 of the Electoral Bond Scheme does not adequately balance the rights, but rather tilts the balance in favour of the right to informational privacy because a. The suitability prong of the proportionality standard is only partly fulfilled. The non-disclosure of information grants anonymity to the contributor, thereby protecting informational privacy. However, there is no nexus between the balancing measure adopted with the purpose of disclosure of information to the voter. According to Clause 7.4 of the Electoral Bond Scheme and the amendments, the information about contributions made through the Electoral Bond Scheme is exempted from the disclosure requirements. This information is never disclosed to the voter. The purpose of securing information about political fund funding cannot be fulfilled by absolute non-disclosure. B. We have proceeded to apply the subsequent prongs of the double proportionality standard, assuming that the suitability prong is satisfied. Section 29, capital C of the Representation of People Act, which states that information of contributions made below rupees 20,000 in a financial year need not be disclosed, is a lesser restrictive means to achieve both the right to information and the right to information privacy. The underlying rationale on Section 29C1 is that contributions below the threshold do not have the ability to influence decisions and the right to information of financial contributions does not extend to contributions we do not have the ability to influence decisions. Similarly, the right to privacy of political affiliation does not extend to contributions may be made which may be made to influence policies. It only extends to contributions made as a genuine form of political support. It is quite possible that contributions beyond the threshold of rupees 20,000 could also be a form of political support and not necessarily a quid pro quo arrangement and contributions below the threshold could influence electoral outcomes. However, the restriction on the right to information and informational privacy of such contributions is minimal when compared to the provision of blanket non-disclosure. Thus, this lesser restrictive alternative realizes the right to information of an informed voter and informational privacy to political affiliation in a real and substantial manner. The Union of India has been unable to establish that the measure employed in Clause 7.4 of the Electoral Bond Scheme is the least restrictive means to balance the rights of informational privacy to political contributions and the right to information of political contributions. Thus, the amendment to Section 13, Capital A, Bracket B of the Income Tax Act, introduced by the Finance Act 2017, and the amendment to Section 29C1 of the Representation of People's Act, are declared unconstitutional. The question is whether this court should only strike down the non disclosure provision in the electoral bond scheme that is clause 7.4. The anonymity of the contributor is intrinsic to the electoral bond scheme. The electoral bond scheme is not distinguishable from other modes of contributions through banking channels such as checks, transfer, transfer through the electronic clearing system or direct debit if the anonymity component of the stream is struck down. Thus, the electoral bond scheme 2018 will have to be struck down as unconstitutional. Issue 4. Whether the amendment to Section 182.3 of the Companies Act is unconstitutional. The amendment to Section 182.3 of the Companies Act, deleting the requirement of disclosing the particulars of contributions made to political parties, is unconstitutional for the following reasons. A. Section 182.3, as amended by the Finance Act 2017, 
mandates the disclosure of total contributions made by political parties. This requirement would ensure that the money which is contributed to political parties is accounted for. However, the deletion of the mandate of disclosing the particulars of contributions violates the right to information of the voter since they would not possess information about the political party to which the contribution was made, which, as we have held above, is necessary to identify corruption and quid pro quo transactions in governance, information which is necessary for exercising an informed vote. B. Section 182.3 of the Companies Act and Section 29C of the Representation of People Act, as amended by the Finance Act, must be read together. Section 29C exempts political parties from disclosing information of contributions received through electoral bonds. However, Section 182.3 not only applies to contributions made through electoral bonds, but through all modes of transfers. In terms of the provisions of the Representation of People Act, if a company make, made contributions to political parties through check or electronic clearing system, the political party has to disclose the details in its report. Thus, the information about contributions by the company would be in the public domain. The only purpose of amending Section 182.3 was to bring the provision in tune with the amendment under the Representation of the People's Act, exempting the contributions through electoral bonds from disclosure requirements. The amendment to Section 182.3 of the Companies Act becomes osseous in terms of our holding that the electoral bond scheme and relevant amendments to the Representation of the People Act and the Income Tax Act mandating non-disclosure of particulars on political contributions through electoral bonds is unconstitutional. Whether unlimited political contributions by companies is unconstitutional. The amendment to Section 182 of the Companies Act permitting unlimited political contributions to companies, or it should be by companies, is manifestly arbitrary for the following reasons. A. The ability of a company to influence the electoral process through political contributions is much higher when compared to that of an individual. A company has a much graver influence on the political process, both in terms of the quantum of money contributed to political parties and the purpose of making such contributions. Contributions made by individuals have a degree of support or affiliation to a political association. However, contributions made by companies are purely business transactions made with the intent of securing benefits in return. The amendment to Section 182 is manifestly arbitrary for treating political contributions by companies and individuals alike. B. Companies before the amendment to Section 182 could only contribute a certain percentage of the net aggregate profits. The provision classified between loss-making companies and profit-making companies for the, for the purpose of political contributions and for good reason. The underlying principle of this distinction was that it is more plausible that loss-making companies will contribute to political parties with a quid pro quo and not for the purpose of income tax benefits. The provision, as amended by the Finance Act 2017, does not recognize that the harm of contributions by loss-making companies in the form of quid pro quo is much higher. Thus, the amendment to Section 8182 is manifestly arbitrary for not making a distinction between profit-making and loss-making companies for the purposes of political contributions. C. The purpose of Section 182 is to curb corruption and electoral financing. For instance, the purpose of banning a government company from contributing is to prevent such companies from entering the political fray by making contributions to political parties. The amendment to Section 182 by permitting unlimited corporate contributions authorizes unrestrained influence of companies in the electoral process. This is violative of the principle of free and fair elections and political equality captured in the value of one person, one vote. The following are our conclusions. A. The electoral bond scheme, the proviso to Section 29C bracket 1 of the Representation of the People Act 1951, as amended by Section 137 of the Finance Act 2017, Section 182.3 of the Companies Act, as amended by Section 154 of the Finance Act 2017, and Section 13, <coughs> capital A, bracket B, as amended by Section 11 of the Finance Act 2017, are violative of Article 191A and unconstitutional. And B, the deletion of the proviso to Section 182.1 of the Companies Act, permitting unlimited corporate contributions to political parties, 
is arbitrary and violative of Article 14. We consequently issue the following directions. A. The issuing bank shall herewith stop the issuance of electoral bonds. B. State Bank of India shall submit details of the electoral bonds purchased since the interim order of this court dated 12 April 2019 till date to the Election Commission of India. The details shall include the date of purchase of each electoral bond, the name of the purchaser of the bond, and the denomination of the electoral bond purchased. C. State Bank of India shall submit the details of political parties which have received contributions through electoral bonds since the interim order of this court dated 12 April 2019 till date to the Election Commission of India. SBI must disclose details of each electoral bond encashed by political parties, which shall include the date of encashment and the denomination of the electoral bond. D. SBI shall submit the above information to the ECI within three weeks from the date of this judgment, that is by 6 March 2024. E. The ECI shall publish the information shared by the SBI on its official website within one week of the receipt of the information that is by 13 March 2024 and F electoral bonds which are within the validity period of 15 days that which have uh, but which have not been encashed by political parties yet shall be returned by the political party to the purchaser depending on who is in possession of the bond to the issuing bank. The issuing bank upon the return of the valid bond shall refund the amount to the purchaser's account.